The mouthpiece is a very integral part of the whole playing apparatus, the physiology, the musicianship of the musician. The mouthpiece is the link between the brass player and the brass instrument. And so with the entire process being to create musical sounds that match what the artist has in their head, the mouthpiece for brass players is a very critical component in that process. One of the most critical areas is the top surface of the brass mouthpiece rim. It's a complex contour. We either cut it using a digital scan profile, so thousands of points over the course of a quarter of an inch, or it's done with arc contours, but they're usually very complex arc contours. There are a lot of players that are very sensitive to that. My name is Jeff Park. My company is Park Mouthpiece Center, and we're here on the ninth floor of the Fine Arts Building in Chicago. I started, oh gosh, I guess in the 90s making mouthpieces for Doc Severinsen. We've made mouthpieces for Herb Alpert, people like Chris Martin. He started playing our mouthpieces when he was principal trumpet in the Atlanta Symphony. Then he was principal trumpet in the Chicago Symphony. And now he's principal trumpet in the New York Philharmonic and he's still buying stuff from us quite often. The main options with brass mouthpieces are diameter, depth, the bore size of the mouthpiece, the contour of the back bore, the shape of the rim. Also, they're very small. The, the internal bores are very small. It's a lot of detailed work, a lot of intricate work. The difference between one size and the next size over is only two and a half thousandths diameter difference. So obviously that's a fairly thin cut. You can't have a lot of tolerance issues or you're closer to the next size than the size you were supposed to be cutting. And one of the things that's really important is concentricity. If you're coming in from two different ends of a long part that has a, that has a profile inside that, that has to be duplicated very precisely, those two different tools coming in from the two different ends have to blend perfectly. That's sort of the nature of musical instruments. So a lot of very small, very intricate parts, and they all have to be made within certain level of precision, but they all, everybody wants them to look like jewelry. They don't want them to look like a machined part. They want it to look polished. One advantage for me about these machines is they're all single phase 220. They're all rated at 20 amps. They don't have any hydraulic systems. So right now I've got all three of these Haas CNC lathes on their own 20 amp breakers all feeding together into a 50 amp single phase circuit. Runs great, never had a problem, never a low voltage situation, never an alarm. I can even put my air compressor on the same circuit. They all run great and I've never heard of three industrial quality CNC machines that could run off a single phase 50 amp circuit, which means you could do this anywhere. There's a craftsmanship element as well. You have to try different things, test the results. It's very much like playing a musical instrument. You have to basically learn how to get the best results out of that piece of equipment. By doing that, by trying the, structuring the ops differently, putting the different profile contours, threading, things like that in different order and trying things over the years, we've come up with what I think gives us the best results. Making things, creating things, just being able to work on something and then see it and touch it and, and see other people use it. That creates a certain kind of satisfaction that is different from the satisfaction of a good musical performance. I mean, they're both satisfying, but in very different ways. I attended the Eastman School of Music uh, in the 1970s, and I had about a 25-year career as a professional musician, union musician, including about 10 years in Broadway theaters in New York. So it really helps to have a real-world connection to the users of the, whatever product you're gonna make. If you decide that you wanna build anything and you're willing to put in the time to learn the tools, learn the techniques, build the relationships that you need, and be loyal and serving a customer base, you, you can have a business. You, you can have your own job for the rest of your life. So I, I enjoyed making stuff. I enjoyed the CNC production process. It's, it's just been a pleasure working with the Haas machines. <laughs>